Hello my garden friends, this is Jersey Shore Lisa from MyNJGarden.com and we're going to take a look around the yard today. It's a beautiful day in July and it just rained this morning, though it wasn't forecasted on my weather app. Our weather is getting so crazy, it gets super humid and hot and then it rains as if, as if we're in central Florida. Uh, and then the rain stops and everything goes back the way it was, a sunny day. Um, I have come across, unfortunately I got stung this week because I was weeding in the garden and we're approaching where the nest is. And I have a yellow jacket nest in the ground. You can see that um, white stuff near near the log is actually diatomaceous earth that I put down a couple of days ago to try and help to naturally get rid of the wasps but it hasn't worked yet and now they're going in and out of their hole on the other side of the log so I'm not really sure how to deal with um, yellow jackets in this situation uh, without poisoning my plants and while keeping me safe from the yellow jackets this is i welcome pollinators into the garden but um this is a high traffic area for me and i don't want to continue to get stung so it, any suggestions are very welcome um we have a lot of stuff blooming now and everything is filling in it's kind of getting away from me. This is the time of year when you really need to keep up or else um, you kind of get overwhelmed by what needs to happen. But I'm trying to keep the paths clear and only prune what I need to. Getting ready to harvest some things, so that's great. The jujube are swelling on the tree. So let's see, we'll, we'll pan up to some of that fruit. It looks terrific so far. In a recent video, I showed you guys the Stradolo, the bladder campion, had really gotten very leggy and flopped over and wasn't looking very attractive anymore. I did trim it back quite a lot, and I figured it would probably go dormant until the weather got cooler, but it did not. It actually is regrowing beautifully. So it looks like bladder campion is the kind of plant that if you periodically pinch it back, trim it back, it will just continue to regrow and get bushier throughout the summer. That's good to know, and I didn't know that before. So I will be treating my bladder campion differently next year by continually trimming back the top growth to keep it bushy and not let it get as leggy as it had gotten in my yard. Something else that we can see happens after a big rainstorm is that the tomatoes need support. So that's what I'm here to do. I need to tie up some of these tomatoes. And I'm just using twine. And for this back row of tomatoes, I'm using my fence as the support. But for the front row, I've tied them up to this swing and there's string from the bottom of the plant that gets tied to the top, but there are definitely pieces that have escaped that, that situation. So I need to tie those up to that. Now's also a good time to keep track of, to, to inspect your plants for something like tomato hornworm which is a great big fat caterpillar. They're like the size of your index finger uh, and they are the same color as your tomato plants. So even though they're so big, they're kind of hard to spot. The best way to know to look for them is that in, within four days, the plant will be very defoliated. They eat an enormous amount of foliage every day and, um, and they poop all over the place. So if you see the leaves being stripped off your tomato plants 
and there's a lot of poop around, then it's likely because of a tomato hornworm. Uh, what I've heard that I hadn't heard before is that you can actually inspect your plants. Like if you have a lot of tomato plants and you know that there's hornworms in there, you can inspect them at night with a black light. If you come out into your garden with a black light, the hornworms glow under the black light. So I'd actually like to see that, <laughs> but I haven't yet. Let me know if you've ever done it and um, how cool is that? <laughs> Okay, that looks like a pretty happy and well-secured tomato patch. Let's move on. The Keyhole Garden has experienced tremendous growth. And with that growth, lots of weeds. In fact, I know there are peppers hiding in there, in that jungle, and I need to harvest them. I'm about to go take a look. Wish me luck. Okay, after I moved a lot of the squash out of the way um, and let it cascade over the side of the keyhole garden, we actually have quite a lot of room in there now. So I think I'm gonna follow it up with some bush beans and hopefully they'll produce before the end of the summer. In this bed, there's not much actual production because I let these carrots go. They, they, they had, um, I planted them last year and many of them didn't germinate until the fall and I left them in the garden and let them grow in spring and they all flowered and the pollinators have been loving them but it's really time to get them out of here because they're taking up too much space and not much else is happening. There's actually quite a lot of baby corn planted in here and there's also some more squash. So I'm gonna clear some room and see what else I can add before the summer's over. I might put in some arugula or some kale um, to take advantage of it as a fall crop. Much better. Time to pop these into the compost. Another garden development from this week are my moringa cuttings. My garden friend Paula, uh, who is local to me, she lives in my neighborhood and she is uh, adding productive plants to her landscape, uh, traded me for some cuttings of a moringa tree that she has in her greenhouse in her yard. Um, so since I also have a greenhouse, I'm going to try to uh, propagate this and get it growing in my greenhouse as well. Moringa, I've heard wonderful things about it as a permaculture plant and it's uh, the leaves are very high in protein so the tree has edible leaves uh, but it does grow in much warmer regions of the world. Um, supposedly they're very easy to root cuttings though I've seen the videos I've seen online are of hardwood cuttings that are much larger than these. These are softwood cuttings uh, from new growth on the tree, but uh, we have some live leaves on there and they've been in these pots for a few days now, so maybe it'll work. I'm hoping that it will. So I'm keeping them in a shady part of the food forest. It's right by my rain barrels, obviously, and my compost, uh, so I can keep a close eye on them and I'll make sure that the seed starting mix that they're in remains slightly damp and we'll hopefully get new roots on them soon. Cross your fingers, I am. For those of you who wanted an update on the Apios Americana, I believe they're called, that's the American groundnut. Here they are, um, they are doing okay. They are vining and seem pretty happy they haven't flowered yet, so I'm looking forward to that. But they have also not been attacked by critters, so that's a good thing. Um, I'm looking, that, that one is not looking quite as happy. There's some yellowing on the leaves. There's some die off on the end of that vine, but the plant is still alive. So I'll update you again when it flowers so we can see what those look like. 
In case you didn't know, the Apios Americana, the American groundnut, is an edible perennial legume. So the vine is a nitrogen fixing vine and um, obviously it does like to crawl up structures like a trellis, um, but it does fix nitrogen from the air into the soil to fertilize the plants around it and to improve the soil. So that is definitely a reason to have it in your yard other than the fact that it also produces edible tubers underground. So if you have a thriving patch of groundnut, uh, you can certainly dig up your tubers and eat them. They are kind of like golf ball sized potatoes and they look like a string of pearls. They're attached on long roots. So that's the way they go and that's the way they grow. <laughs> I just harvested a few sweet green peppers out of the garden and wanted to show you those. You can see that I am steadily working through my pile of mulch on the driveway. When I first got the pile, when they first, the arborist came by and dumped them for me, they were all the way down to the grape arbor. Uh, that's how big the pile was. So I've gotten through quite a lot of them. And then I also wanted to show you the Malabar spinach. Malabar spinach is not actually spinach, but it tastes like it. Um, it's a vining crop. It's an annual, but it does reseed itself very easily. So I haven't planted Malabar spinach in this garden in three years. Um, <clears throat> but the leaves are fleshy. Uh, you can kind of see what they look like. And the stems are red and it's just starting I thought I saw that it's just starting to put out some flowers. You can see those little white flowers there. After the flowers are done, they're actually just buds right now. There's another one. Um, it will produce berries and inside each berry is a seed and then that's how it reseeds around the garden. Um, so if you pick those berries and you rub them up against a metal sieve and clean them off and dry them out, you can save the seeds and share them. Um, but if not, just leave them in the garden and you'll have Malabar spinach every year. Malabar spinach thrives in the heat and it likes to vine around trellises. It's a beautiful crop to have in the garden. And just here you can see after a big rain, the elderberry is sagging like crazy but it's perking up already. When I first got out here this morning after it had poured, it was really bending down, but now it's reaching for the sky again. And you can see that there are still a few flowers on the tree, but for the most part, the flowers have dropped and the berries are starting to form. They're small and green right now, but they're going to get plump and black and ready to harvest and then we'll make some tasty stuff from those elderberries uh, and down here you can see along the this bed uh, the strawberries are kind of burning out for the season um, they won't produce until the weather gets a little cooler and then they'll start flowering again i did chop and drop some of the comfrey so there's some dead leaves all around there and those are comfrey leaves that are drying out uh, and then you can see a couple of tomatoes on the bottom of that plant so it's time for me to harvest those and bring them inside because i can see that they're splitting thank you for joining me today everyone in mynjgarden.com please subscribe to the channel and like the video and join me for all my garden updates happy gardening everyone take care bye bye